good evening good morning good afternoon wherever you are once again evangelist rachel gayla kisa kisa means grace i'm a woman that cannot describe the grace of god upon my life even my children today i would like to speak to a believer who is kind kind of you're kind of losing hope or you're losing faith in jesus or you're being tempted by the enemy i would like to speak to somebody who has been praying for years and yet you do not see answers i'm not only here to encourage you or uplift your spirit but i'm here to reveal the truthfulness the power the grace and the love of god Um, let me start from this note, Luke 4, 18. All I ask of you, everybody who follows me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, on TV, or hear me on WhatsApp, on radio, um, I encourage you to buy a book, Bible. A book, a book, Bible is going to help you in so many ways. I believe in reading from paper and I believe in, I believe in writing. I have found help uh, from reading the Bible, especially the New Testament. And uh, I have found a lot of wisdom and I've found healing. And um, I have found healing. And uh, the most important thing is that Anyway, even before I knew the Bible, I knew Jesus. I grew up knowing Jesus, and I know that Jesus is very powerful, and I know that he's the miracle worker. And when I was tempted to deny him, uh, he gave me grace not to deny Jesus because I had to choose from a rich man, money, and a good life. So I had to choose not knowing that the journey was going to be so difficult, complicated, tormenting, harassing, uh, bringing a lot of sicknesses and diseases in my life. However, he took me out of it. So I know Jesus as Jesus, the mighty God. I know Jesus as Jesus, the Savior. And I know that, that there's nothing he can do. You know, he has power to stop darkness and it's the same power he gave to us. So just in case you have a problem that has been an ending, a situation that is so difficult, uh, just in case you are losing hope in the Lord, I would like to encourage you in this video, stand and read the Bible. I want to show you a scripture that is going to help you wherever you are. And this scripture is from the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 18. Luke, chapter 4, and verses 18. You have been praying, you have been giving, you have been fasting. Maybe some people will say, oh, I believe in God, or I don't need Jesus. People believe in Jesus and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Forgive my nails. <laughs> I've been very busy the whole of this month. Um, those of you who don't know my testimony, um, my name is Rachel Gayla Kisa. I originate from a country called Uganda. I'm a mother of two, Tyrus and Nathan, and I survived death. I was given a venomous poison. I was um, captivated by a false Christ, and I used I was tormented by Lucifer because he wanted me to serve him for fame and wealth. To be out there to tell people miracles, anointing, and not teach people truth. That is why my messages always are embedded with truth. And this is the truth. Sin no more. You're not supposed to be a sinner, a sinful believer. You're supposed to be a Christian, Christ-like. And I asked a question that, uh, did Jesus sin in the Bible? No, Jesus never sinned. And then why do we believe a sin? Or people say because he said... Uh, uh, 
forgive my sins. Yes, you were a sinner before you knew Jesus, but are you still a sinner? No. How can you be a sinner and yet you are saved from sin? How can you be in Christ and in the devil's world at the same time? So I discourage uh, notions and doctrines that tell people, oh, it's okay to sin, just say forgive me. No, those, that life we lived and we suffered. I remember I used to go to church and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I repent. Yeah, honestly speaking, I knew that what I was doing was wrong. And therefore I had to change and repent, not knowing that this was the answer. I was captivated by the enemy from the time I was formed in my mother's womb. Look for 18. I want you to study this scripture and see the power of salvation and the power of grace. But you have to read this. So he says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and to recover sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord. He wrote the scroll and gave it back. Now, see, he says he has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. Now, can you go and see John 8? He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoner. Who is a prisoner? So long as you are suffering and you are in pain, you are a prisoner. You are a prisoner of pain. If you are involved in witchcraft, you are a prisoner of witchcraft. If you are living in sin, you are a prisoner of sin. If you are fearful, you are a prisoner of fear. If you are in poverty, you are a prisoner of poverty. If you are just uh, in religious spirit, you are you're captivated by religious spirit. If there is a lying spirit, you're captivated by a lying spirit. So you have to write down everything that bothers you. Put it down on paper. Write down the symptoms and say, I will not be a prisoner of poverty. I will not be a prisoner of sin. I will not be a prisoner of the snake spirit. I won't be a prisoner of Lucifer. I won't be a prisoner of Jezebel. I will not be a prisoner of the world. I will not be a prisoner of hate. I will not be a prisoner of murder. I will not be a prisoner of wickedness. I will not be a prisoner of gossip. You can get Galatians 5 and get Exodus 20. Now let us see John 8. Thank you Lord because you're helping me here to minister to somebody. Listen ladies and gentlemen, even if it is a sickness that has captivated your life, don't allow to be in at any kind of prison that has been put to you by the devil. All right. John 8. Thank you, Lord. Whether it is sin, alcoholism, prostitution, deception, anger, unforgiveness, doubt, fear, worry, death, spiritual death, bad dreams, hallucinations, demons, Satan, sicknesses, diseases, mental illness. So long as you have a sound mind, this is your answer. Practice this every single day and tell me whether you remain in that prison. You just have to identify your problem. Maybe you're, over, maybe you're too talkative. Maybe you're full of hate. Maybe you condemn and judge others. Maybe you don't even pray for other people. That is a prison. Maybe you can't fast. That is a prison. You understand? There is something captivating you. And it is Satan, the bad guy. But listen, a person who has taken time to study the scriptures will know, even if it's a counterfeit, monitoring spirits, human spirits, astral projection. Do you see people walking people's houses? That's astral projection. Seeing that dead, that's demonic. That's a prison. So we're going to write down anything that is affecting our lives, even our children. Maybe you see your child is a thief or a liar. Or you curse people. Maybe you, you could even be a minister or a pastor. And you stand to say, I cast a witch. That is a prison. You know what? You're supposed to bless your enemies. You're supposed to save your enemies. You cannot be in prison until you study Jesus. I tell people, study Jesus. Before you watch Rachel Gaylor, Miss Joyce Meyer, the one I love, any minister, any bishop, any cardinal, please read the word over and over again, especially the New Testament. John 8. Before you sing, 
people love singing. They cram. You, someone can worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. And then they sing. It doesn't. They sing. Um, uh, they can sing. You know these songs of um, uh, of the world. Um, I've even forgotten them. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, someone can worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Immediately, they turn on a song of C.C. Wine, of Celine Dion, or Whitney Houston. Then where are you? <laughs> are you in Christ? Are you in, king, in the kingdom of God? You people, be careful. Who is ruling your worship? Who is ruling your preaching? Many people have been deceived. Study. Where is your captivation? John chapter 8. Send this message to the people and watch it over and over again. Even me, I'm going to watch it because I received a download. Mm -hmm. Monitoring spirits, counterfeit. You see some people preaching people's messages. You're like, oh, why are you in my house? Away from me, evil. Away from me, astro projector. Away from me, snake spirits. Repent if you're a human spirit. Study the word. Unbelievable. There are so many people that have been captivated by the counterfeit. But in the name of Jesus, anyone that I know, anyone who knows my voice, anyone who sees me even in the dreams, may you be delivered from Jezebel. May you be delivered from Lucifer. May you be saved from astral projection. Be saved from the false Christ, the antichrist, the anti-truth. Will, will you be delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus the Lord and Jesus the King? I stop astral projection. I stop any form of captivity that has been around me, my friends, my children, my church, in the name of Yeshua, the Son of the Living God. Amen. That's the way we do it. We are saviors. Amen. If you sense any evil presence, you have to pray like that. Satan does not only send devils, but he sends human spirits to tap into your spirit. And you feel it. You can feel something on your body. You feel something like a snake or see something like a black thing or white thing in your house. Anything that is making you, disorganizing you, you just know that is the devil. And he's sending agents in your house to confuse you, deceive you. So you must know how to overcome them. Anyway, that's captivation. We must be free from these things. John 8. John 8. Chapter 24. He says, very really, truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. You see, in Luke 4, 18, he says, I have come to set the captives free. And now he tells us who is in captivity, a sinner. So anything bad that you do, even if it is stealing, quarreling, gossiping, over-talking, over-judging, over-condemning, you are the one who sees this one. Now this one is ugly. Now this one is beautiful. This one is getting married tomorrow. Everything that is bad, a civilized Christian doesn't do. You know you can be a Christian, be born again. But you also have to be a wise, civilized, disciplined, well-mannered Christian. You understand? You have to be an, a well-mannered, civilized, disciplined Christian. Humble and pure-hearted, pure speech. Your conduct has to be different. So if you study Galatians 5, Exodus 20, and start to live it, that is going to be your freedom. You have to be different. Not in a religious way, but different knowing who you are. Now I'm going to tell you, you can set yourself free. You can set yourself free from a cage. How? Identify where you're falling short. Identify your sins. Identify your mistakes or your weaknesses. And after you identify, I even identify the bondages, whether it's a sickness or a disease, anything that has been holding you in captivity. Once you identify it, begin to say, Lord, deliver me from this cage. Deliver me. Because when you go to Jesus, yes, I walk to Yamba. Jesus is there to help us. 
Jesus is not there to do to oh, sin for me. No, I came to help you people. I am to I came to help anyone with red blood, whether you are Chinese, you are Indian, you are Caucasian, and uh, Angolian, Nigerian, Ghanaian. Go to the Lord. Don't be proudful. I tell people, how can you abuse somebody, insult somebody? When I came to America, you know, in Uganda, I used to have a different kind of life. I used to have a high-end kind of life. I used to be a CEO, and before that, I worked for a radio station. I took myself to school. Okay, my sister helped me, but after all, I took myself to school. I really needed to live a, a white collared corporate kind of lifestyle i hated poverty and i hated not to be educated so i fought so hard to get to where i was i hated a bad life but i had friends and most of my friends were from church when i came to america boom i bumped into church i met people that were abusive people that were greedy people that were primitive People that were uncivilized. People who didn't even know how to hold a fork. And I'm like, Lord, how did I bump into this life? But I'm going to tell you, the Lord was training me. Those are the people I'm going to help. And those are the people I'm helping now. And I'm going to tell you, I've never seen, you know, there's in Africa, we have Church of Uganda and we have Born Again. But there is Abayai in Born Again. And I'm going to tell you, never be a Muyaye born again. Be a civilized, well-mannered Christian. Give God glory by the way you live and conduct your life. I'm going to tell you, even if you see that you are dirty or disorganized, or you have sleepless nights like me sometimes when I used to be attacked,